Hi guys, and welcome to the latest installment in my series on the pros and cons of different planner systems. So as you can see, today we're going to be talking about disband planners. So disband planners are a system that I didn't actually know anything about until relatively recently. For years I'd known about and used bookbound planners and spiral planners, and I also knew about ringbound planners, but I'd never heard of the disband system. And it was actually only well after I had got into the YouTube planner community that I ever discovered them at all. I think the first time I heard about them was from Miss Vicky B in her video about how she turned her Erin Condren into a disband planner. So I remember thinking like disband, that's a funny name, it sounds like Disworld, the books by Terry Pratchett. And I noticed that, you know, she had these like plastic discs, I think they must have been from Staples. And I didn't really think much more of it. It kind of didn't make much of an impression. And then I think I saw a couple of videos by people who were using the Arc system. And that was kind of all that, like, it, it really didn't make much of an impression on me. I didn't think I'd like to try that. I just kind of, I wrote it off. And it was really only when the Happy Planner came out that I kind of found out a bit more about the system and how it worked. Because, you know, like when the Happy Planner came out, it just became so popular and you saw the Happy Planner everywhere and tons of people were using them that you kind of couldn't avoid it. But even then, I, I, it didn't speak to me. It didn't seem like something that I would want to try. I don't remember being curious about it at all. Like the, when I first saw a Hobonichi video, I was like instantly fascinated and I was just like, oh my goodness, I love this. Like, when can I get one? But with the Happy Planner, I, I didn't like the laminated covers, which is no surprise to you if you've seen my other videos. And... I just didn't, it, it somehow didn't grab me. And it was really only a few months ago in like kind of the late autumn when I first decided to make this series on different planner systems that I decided that I would have to try a disband planner just because I wanted to be comprehensive. So I thought if I'm making a video on every planner system, I have to try the disband planners. And at the time, the options were really only the ARC system at Staples, which we have in the UK, and the Happy Planner, which I could get on Amazon. So I first looked at Staples because I, I thought I didn't like the look of the Happy Planner, and it turned out that the covers were leather, which was really disappointing. They do also have some polypropylene covers, but they just didn't look nice to me. They looked like kind of like school or office notebooks, and I, they didn't feel like... I wanted a planner to feel, so I decided not to go for that. So I ordered a happy planner, and while it was on its way, because it was coming from the US, I went to a conference in Boston, ironically, and I could have bought a happy planner there maybe, but actually there turned out to be a Levenger shop in the place where the conference was, and so I got this, and I was really excited because this was like the first disbound planner that I had seen in person. And I was immediately surprised by how much I liked it. So, like I said, I, I just wanted to get a disband planner so that I could try it out and see what it was like and, you know, kind of be able to talk about it with, you know, having had some experience of it. But I really didn't think that I would like it. And I just instantly was converted. I loved it for reasons that I will talk about in a minute. So I instantly set this up as a kind of reference list, um, what, uh, like a, a book of, of reference lists for James and me to use um, so like meals that we like films that we want to see like planners that we have stuff that you can get in like the you know various um, shops like you know zero waste shops and where, where you could buy things in bulk stuff like that and I really really liked it and then the happy planner came and I was again totally surprised by how much I liked that so aside from the laminated covers which I'm not a fan of I just really liked the system, I, and I like the inserts, and I just like the, the way that the disbound planners work. And that was a total surprise to me, because I really wasn't expecting to like them. And it just goes to show you how sometimes, from like, kind of, even if you watch a lot of videos about something, you don't really know how you'll feel about it until you actually kind of experience it for yourself. And so I was using this as a meal tracker, and occasionally as a real meal planner and really, really liked it, and then heard the amazing news that changed my life, 
which is that Doki Books was coming out with their own disband system. And I knew that that would like kind of be it because I really love Doki Books. I love their traveler's notebooks and I love their ring band planners. So I knew that if they made a disband planner, I would love it too. And I do. As you know, if you've seen my disband videos, you know like how devoted I am to this. So when this came, I was just like, I'm totally, totally in love. And this kind of like sealed beyond a doubt my great passion for the disband system, which like I said, came as a complete surprise to me. So now here I am, only a few months later, I went from like not having heard of disband planners to having three different disband planners and I love all of them. And I just think it's an awesome system. So why do I like it so much? So the pros are that it's really, really flexible and customizable. So if you're used to ring band planners, and I was using ring band planners from most of last year, much of last year, not exclusively, but I was using like quite a few different ring band planners. And I really like the flexibility, but there are a lot of other issues that I have with the rings that kind of made me decide that I didn't want to use them as planners, which I've talked about in my pros and cons of ring band planner video. And I feel like the disband planners like kind of have all of the positive elements that I liked about ring band planners, but none of the negatives. So like one of the positives is obviously that you can, you know, make it completely your own. You can do whatever you want with it. You can make different sections. You can totally customize. You can take pages out. You can move pages to different sections. You can add more pages. You can punch your own pages and put them in so you can have whatever design inserts you want with whatever cover you want. I'll talk more about the punch later, but you know, you can make it completely your own. You can have 10 different sections if you want to. You like, you can use it just as a planner, but you could also use it for so many other things. So, um, you know, like keeping track of documents, like you can punch documents and put them in, you can store things, you, like you can really do whatever you want with it. And so just as much as you can do that with ring bound planners, so you can do it in exactly the same way with this because the pages are just as removable and repositionable. So that I think is awesome. Another thing that I really like about them is I like the way the discs look. So I just really like the aesthetics of them. I like, I like how the book looks with the discs on the outside. I, I don't know why. I just like the way they, they look, particularly the metal ones. I somehow feel like it looks kind of like a, a bound book, but y you have these like cool discs and I like how the discs can be designed in different ways. So like the most famous example is the happy planner with the, with the heart cut out in the middle. My favorite is the disc agenda, which has got these circles cut out of the middle. And I really like how, how they're metal and they can be different colors and they don't have to be metal. The, the Happy Planner ones are plastic, which I don't like as much, but how they, they can be made out of metal. I, I just think that's really nice. It just seems like kind of quality and durable and you know, they'll last. And I also like how you can like kind of customize the discs. So you see this particularly with the Happy Planner, you see people who have like, they've sort of made, made their own disc setup. So they have all different colors of discs or they'll have like, turquoise and gold or something because the happy planner makes a lot of different colors of discs levenger also has a lot of different colors of discs unfortunately they're very expensive but if you like i don't know if you wanted to have like silver and purple or something like you you could just buy two sets of discs and then you can use them forever so i really like that and this is something that i kind of have like one of my issues with ring bound planners that i've i've mentioned before but i, I don't think i've really explained it is why I, for some reason, I don't really like the aesthetic of the rings. I really like the binders, but there's something about the ring mechanism that has never really appealed to me. Like going back years, I never wanted to have a Filofax. I just never wanted to have a ring bound planner. And I think the reason is that this mechanism is the same as the mechanism that you get in, in the UK, they're called lever arch files. They're like the, you know, just like standard, office files it, like uh, i think in the us they have three uh it's like a three ring binder i think they're called you know like just what you'd use like if you work in an office and you have to like punch documents and store them um and and so it reminds me of university because that's the kind of file that i use throughout university to like you know store all of my notes and it also reminds me of working in offices because i used to work in you know like admin 
years ago and you know you just have rows and rows of those files on the wall and you like put all of the documents in them and it's the same mechanism so even though you can get like really pretty rings and you know like these are gold and they match the binder and everything it's somehow that same mechanism that's just what it reminds me of that like those are the associations it's kind of like how I associate spiral binders with like really cheap spiral notebooks that I used when I was a kid in school and I just can't break, break the association so I think that this is one of my issues with ring binders they just remind me of of lever arch files which is maybe why I somehow feel like they work better for me as storage binders because that's like how my brain thinks of them and it's it's not their fault it's just like a completely personal thing but that's how that's what I associate them with but for some reason the disband system, I think because I didn't know about it, it's not commonly used, like, you know, you you, you never see disbound uh, admin, you know, like folders of documents in, in offices. So it doesn't have any associations. And I just really like the way it looks. If that makes any sense, that's I think that I think that's the root of the issue. So I really like the look of it. I, I like how the, the discs look on the outside of the thing. I could. Yeah, I just um aesthetically i find it very pleasing and another thing that i really really like about the disband system is how it's great for archiving because unlike again ring planners i don't mean to pick on ring planners but it's just in in this respect they are quite comparable because they can do a lot of the same things but this is somehow like just tweaked in a way that solves all the problems that i have with ring planners so with uh, with ring planners, I've always had an issue with how to archive the pages because the rings are attached to the binder, right? So as soon as you take out the pages, you just have a whole bunch of loose sheets. And that always bothered me because I know that there are like lots of ingenious ways that different people have designed to archive. But I never liked the idea of like just having a whole bunch of loose sheets and putting them in a box because then it's like you have loose sheets or like if you tie them together with um, with like, you know, string or so like um treasury tags or something that just feels messy to me as well and i really don't want to go to that much effort in archiving so with the disband system like all you have to do literally if so say with the diva where you have it inside this cover you just take it out of the cover and then there you can put that on the shelf and that's it so if you wanted to keep your your year's worth of pages you don't have to do anything it's it's already set up and then next year you could just buy some new discs and new inserts so like the the disc agenda is the doki book is awesome because they sell all of the different components separately so you could just buy inserts and if you didn't want to keep keep the old ones you could recycle them and then reuse the the discs and the covers and everything or if you wanted to keep this whole thing as a unit and archive it then you could replace all of these components you could get new ones and and still keep your old cover and then similarly with the happy planner you can just take the whole thing and put it on the shelf and i think that that's really nice because this is one of the things that i like about bookbound planners is that it's so easy to archive them and that they feel like a unit and so i feel like disbound planners are just as much of a unit if you you know like if you want to archive them you you can because the discs are attached to the book rather than to a cover with something like this it's a bit harder because you well i guess what you could do is you like if you wanted to keep the cover you would just take the cover off and when this was full you know like you'd archive the insides and and get new discs um which is something that's nice it's like a modular system so you can just get the parts that you need you can just get new discs or you can just get new inserts and and so i really like that it's like it's it's flexible, but it's also very easily archivable. Another thing that I like is that this is a kind of a small thing, but it's, it's quite a nice sort of important one. So just like spiral bound planners, you can fold these over on themselves. And this is never something that I really thought about, like, because I had a spiral bound planner years ago, and I never really thought about the fact that you could fold it over on it on itself. So that's not, not something that I missed when I had bookbound planners but because it's something that a lot of people mention in the planner community I, I kind of had a heightened awareness of it so when I got a spiral bound planner a few months ago and that was the first one I'd had in years I was kind of conscious of the fact that it's convenient how you can fold it over on itself and then when I got this disbound planner I noticed the same thing I was like oh you can fold it over on itself that's really nice 
And so it, it is, it's just, it's kind of nice to be able to write like this. For one thing, it's more compact. And for another thing, it kind of makes me feel like a reporter. So I like that. Another thing that I like is how sort of this ties in with the, the fact that you can archive them easily. It feels like a unit. It feels like a book much more than uh, like a, a ring bound planner does to me. Or I guess in like a traveler's notebook because the traveler's notebook is made up of all like different smaller inserts. So this, even though like technically it is just individual loose sheets of paper that you can take in and out, somehow the whole thing together feels more like a unit, even though it's not bound with stitching or glue it feels much more like a book bound planner to me. And that's something that I've always really liked is, is something that feels like a book. And then another thing that I like is how compared to ring planners, I feel like these are not as hard to write in. So with the rings, I think you know a common complaint is that the rings get in the way of writing. And I assume that the disc would be the same, but for some reason I find it much easier to write over the discs and obviously this depends on the size of the disc so if you had like really big expander discs then that probably would get in the way but somehow I don't feel like it's it's a problem with these these are uh, 33 millimeter discs and the, like the Levenger ones are, are really small so it's even less of an issue and particularly if you fold it over on itself I somehow it feels to me like even on the right side of, on the right page for me because um, I'm left-handed, like that with rings, that would be a big problem. But with this, it's just totally fine. So when it's folded over on itself, it's almost like it's not completely even with the page, but very close. So that's another thing that's really nice is that you kind of get the flexibility of rings, but not any of the hassle. Like, again, I don't mean to bash rings. Like, there are a lot of things that I like about rings as well. So if you like rings, like I don't mean to be insulting them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of feel like they combined, they sort of combine all the, the positive aspects of ring bound, spiral bound and book bound planners and they don't have any of the drawbacks. So having said that, what are the cons? Well, not many as far as I can tell. One thing is that the paper can get torn. So this is not a big problem, but it is something that happens occasionally. I think because there are so many discs. So if it's A5 size, you have eight discs and the Happy Planner has nine discs. So it's quite a lot of discs compared to ring, say. And because of the way the mechanism works, you have uh, what Doki Books calls a mushroom, which I think is a cute name. I don't know if, if other people call it that as well, but it's a good description. So you have like this sort of, you know, like bigger punched area, and then you have like a little slit so that it fits in the disc. And just, I think, because of the way that that works, it's quite easy, especially if you're flipping a lot, but even if you, you know, just kind of, I don't know, if it's a page that gets open to a lot, they can sometimes snag, like, the little edges, and, and they can get a bit torn. So I haven't experienced this myself because these are relatively low use. Like, I, I don't really use any of these as my main planner, so they're not, like, getting lots of intensive, like, kind of wear and tear. But I have seen, like, comments from people saying that, um, like their happy planner kind of disintegrated after carrying it around in their bag for a while. And I could imagine that happening because I, I think the system can be a little bit unstable because you've sort of got the binding on the outside. And particularly if it's plastic, I think these can sometimes crack. So you like you can sometimes have issues, I guess, with it not being completely protected. And like if you I'm not sure if you can see this here, but this page, which is just the front page. So it, you know, somehow is like a little bit more exposed. See how that's like kind of turning up. Um, and so that, that can happen. And then sometimes these can tear a bit. So I think like that is not a major issue, but it is just something that's, it, that can happen. Like in comparison with, with other planning systems, they can be maybe like a little bit more delicate. And then another thing is that you need a disband punch. And until recently, that's been something of an issue as in, so there's the staples punch, which is really expensive and quite like big and bulky. And I, I don't have that. I don't have a, a punch, um, a disbound punch. And I, I would really like to have one because I think it would be so liberating to just be able to punch whatever you want and put it in here because that would really make it like exactly the same as a ring bound planner. You could, you know, get your own inserts and put them in. You could get like Lime Life inserts or any, any other unpunched inserts that 
you, you know that you like the look of you could get them and put them in here and that would be really cool like or you could cut up a bound notebook like you know um, Leuchtturm or, or paper blanks or something you put them in and that would be awesome um, so there's also the Levenger Levenger has a few different punches of different sizes and prices but the cheapest one is called the one two three punch and that's $19 on US Amazon annoyingly it's not available in the UK grr but I think that's a good option because that fits, as far as I know, that fits the Happy Planner and also fits the Disc Agenda Diva. And then, of course, Mambi has just come out with a new punch, which is $30 in the US. And annoyingly, it's £30 in the UK, which is very unfair because it should be more like 20 if it if it was going to be an equivalent price. But I guess they have to pay for import and stuff like that. So fair enough. It's not available in the UK yet, but I really want to get one of those because I, I think probably that would be the best option because it could be used both with the Happy Planner and with the Diva. So I'm stocking the, the shop that is supposed to be carrying them in the UK. Um, they haven't come in yet. So there's the punch issue, which can like sort of be a bit more expensive um, than like say a ring button punch. But then once you invest in it, you only need one and then you can use it forever. Um, another thing that, that I think is, is kind of an issue for me personally is that these can be bulkier certainly than bookbound planners for one thing because you've got the discs again depending on the size so like the the levenger discs are really tiny and you can get the same size disc for the happy planner but it affects how much you could put in it so if you wanted to have like your whole year's worth of diary inserts in it then you need bigger discs and then that makes it a bit bulkier and also i i kind of feel like this is just an impression, I could be wrong, but I feel like these work better with slightly thicker paper, just because you've got you've got so many discs. So if it's A5 size, you have eight discs, and the Happy Planner is a bit bigger and it has nine. So you have a lot of discs, and there's like kind of a lot of turning. So I think with, with thinner paper, my impression is that it wouldn't really work very well. Um, so like, for example, my work planner and personal planner are both Hobonichis and that's because I love how the Tomoe River paper is so thin that you can get a whole bunch of pages in without it being really bulky and so like for me for my work planner like there's no way I would consider anything else because like I you know I want to have all of these different sections and with a disbound planner I don't feel like it I think it would be really prone to ripping just because the, the paper is so thin and I had an experiment, I, I did an experiment cutting up a Hobonichi and putting it into a, a file of facts last year. And the impression that I had from that was that it tore quite easily. And I, I know that there are people like Tracy Reinhardt who was using Tomoe River paper inserts in a file of facts and Marianne Moll, I think as well. And there are a few other people that I've seen. So I know that it's possible. And I'm not saying that like it, it won't work with a ring bound planner. But just my my impression from that was that it was like a little bit more vulnerable to tearing. So I think that all the more so if you had like eight discs and you were moving pages around a lot, I think it might be a bit fragile for that. So I think normally you have like kind of thicker paper, which which means that it can be a bit bulkier. This is not too big. Like this is A5 size and this is a whole year's worth of inserts and it's really not, it's not gigantic. It's quite comparable to my cousin. But of course, the cousin has got all of those different, you know, like it has daily inserts and weekly inserts and monthly inserts. And this only has monthly and weekly, which is normal. So it's just like normal, normal paper, basically. Um, so that means that for me, I wouldn't consider using one of these for my main planners because I just want them to have so many more pages in them than, than it could. But it works really, really well as a home planner that like stays at home. And I think for the Happy Planner, it's the same. Like, I think there are people who carry them around, but I think a lot of people use them as stay-at-home planners because they are a bit bigger. And I don't mean to say that, like, it's impossible to have a petite disc-bound planner because obviously this one is, is smaller and more petite, but again, it, it depends on how much you want to be able to fit in it. If you wanted to put, you know, like a whole bunch of inserts in this, then it, then it would be thicker. So... That's one thing that like just just for me that I wouldn't use the disband system as, a, as my main planner just because I want them to be smaller. Um, but that's like pretty much it. And those cons are really, really minor. So another thing, I, this isn't really a con, like this is not the fault of these planners at all or of the disband system. But 
it's kind of a shame that there's currently a much smaller range for disbound planners than for other planner systems. So there's really only the Happy Planner, the Disc Agenda Diva, the Staples, the Arc system, Levenger, and now the Martha Stewart disband system has come back. And that looks very similar to the Staples or um, Levenger in that it's a notebook rather than being designed specifically with planner addicts in mind. That's my impression. Obviously, because it's disbound, th those those ones are disbound. You can put any inserts that you want into them. And they do make um, definitely undated inserts. And Levenger also has dated inserts, but they're very office-y. Like, they're... They're not, they're not cute. <laughs> so the, as far as I can tell, the only ones that are made just kind of specifically as planners with planner addicts in mind are the Disc Agenda Diva and the Happy Planner, as in they have, you know, like a full year's worth of dated inserts and like they look really nice and they have like cool designs and they're really designed for planner people. Um, but compared to the other systems where you just have like a basically infinite number of different brands and designs, the disc band system is still relatively limited. I don't think that it's a big problem because you've got a couple of really great options. So like my favorite by far is, is the Diva. I just love, love, love it. And I couldn't ask for anything more. Like I'm totally happy with it. So I really don't feel like you need many other options when you've got the Diva. And the Happy Planner also has like, you know, 10 different designs. So on its own, that already gives you a lot of options. And Doki Books is currently working on a new disc agenda. It's going to be called the Disc Agenda Manta and it's going to be black and gold and it looks really awesome just from the pictures that they've put on Instagram and I think it's supposed to be out in the next few weeks so I'm really excited about that so that will be another option. Um, and like I said, it, like if you wanted to you could just buy the discs and some kind of a, like a, a cover like, like this cover let's say and these fly leaves and you could make your own inserts or you know, like get something like Lime Life inserts or whatever and, and put them in here. So it's a, such a flexible system that I don't think it's a problem that there aren't as many different options. But I'm also hoping that in future that we'll see more disbound options because it's such a great system that I feel like it deserves to be more widespread. Obviously, it is a lot more widespread than it was, you know, just a year ago because of the Happy Planner. It's, it's much, much more high profile and visible now. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Disbound Planners. I hope that you enjoyed this. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon in another video. Bye.